Nobody puts out rosemary flatbread panini. 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 Yo, Doc. Me and the crew got something to show you. You ready, boys? Roger, Roger. All right, let's do this. You, my friend, just got served. What the fuck? Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. And today is a weird step. We're actually taking our first delve into music video effects. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably heard of Little Nas X and this little video that came out not that long ago called Panini. And there's a cool sequence in the music video where he's dancing with a robotic dance troupe, which of course are 3D animated models. Which of course brings us full circle back to the skit at the start of the episode. As you can see, I was doing the chicken dance with a dance troupe of 3D animated robots. That's right, the effect has absolutely nothing to do with Star Wars, apart from the fact that I use Star Wars assets. So today I'm going to take you through a quick and easy way to replicate your own robotic dance troupe. Now in order to copy this effect, you'll need access to Mixamo, which is our motion capture library. You'll need to find yourself a model of a robot. In my case, I found this Phantom Menace Battle Droid, which I will link in the description. And as a background, I use the Video Car Pilot Star Wars Pack for Element 3D, which is also free to download. Link down below. Now just a small aside to this guys, if you do actually have a dance that you've already shot and you want to implement that into your robot dances, you will have to keyframe animate those robots. We're doing the down and dirty version and we're just grabbing something that's already on Mixamo. And while I am doing this in Cinema 4D and then bringing it over to After Effects, you can basically use any 3D program that can natively import FBX files, which is pretty much all of them. The only other thing you'll need to do once you've decided on your robot dance animation is to shoot yourself on a green screen dancing along with the choreography of your robots. But apart from that, let's get to work, shall we? Okay guys, so our journey here starts at Mixamo. So I'm just gonna log in. Once I'm logged in, Mixamo is gonna load up and you can see my battle droid is already loaded in. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload the character again, just to take you through the process. So I'll just hit upload character. And from there, it's time to upload your character. And all we're going to do is just hit select character file and grab it from wherever you saved it. Now, once it's processed for a little while, and I mean just a little while, have some patience, it'll go into the auto rigger. So you can see already that our battle droid is in a T pose, which makes things a lot easier. So all we have to do is click next. And from there, you have to designate the different body parts. So first up is the chin. Let's just get that into place. I mean, he <laughs> doesn't really have a chin, but next up is the wrists. Now, this guy has really skinny wrists, so this is a little bit finicky, but there we go. Next up is the elbows. Same deal. From there, we're going to follow it up with the knees. And finally, we'll just put the groin here in between the hips. And all I have to do is just click next. And the auto rig is going to do its thing. This can take a little while, so just have a little bit of patience. It does say it can take up to two minutes. Oh, here we go. And see, we're all done. So you can see it gives you a good preview of how your character's going to move, and you can move around them in 3D space. You can even enable the skeleton view and check out the rigging itself. From there, we're going to apply an animation, so we need to click Next. Now, if you have uploaded a character in the past, you will get this warning because you can only upload one character at a time with Mixmo now. I'm not too worried about this, so I'm just going to click next. And there we go. There's our buddy right there. And all I'm going to do is just go into dance. And from there, you can grab whatever dance you want. So if you want to do a bit of jazz dancing, <laughs> that's just... Absolutely hilarious, but I digress. You can grab any dance you want, guys. So in my case, I grabbed the chicken dance, so I guess I just have to write chicken. There we go. And there's our chicken dance right there. Now, I did slow this down quite considerably just because I just wanted to be a little bit slower. So in order to do that, you can just lower the overdrive and they'll slow down a little bit. 
Now one thing I didn't take into consideration when I lowered that overdrive is that the chicken dance, it's a pretty fast paced dance. And when I lowered that down, I actually wasn't able to use the regular chicken dance pace. So I had to slow down that song. So just be aware that that is something that could happen if you're pairing this to a particular song. And guess what? From there, that's it. Your character is rigged, it's got a dance. All we have to do now is just hit download. Now, what I did with mine was I put the frames to 24 frames per second, and that's it. I just hit download. It'll prepare the download. And as you can see down here, it has downloaded the FBX file. And from there, all we have to do is jump into Cinema 4D. Okay guys, so here we are in Cinema 4D and I've opened up our Battle Droid FBX file. And if I push play, there he is, getting down with his bad self. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Now, in order to move him around and duplicate him to make up our entire dance troupe, the easiest thing to do here is just to highlight the geometry, highlight the rigging, right click, and just go to group objects. Bam, that'll put him in a null object, and now we can easily move him around without screwing up the rigging. Now you might notice that this particular model doesn't have a texture, that's not a big deal. I'm just going to quickly jump into one of my previous models here. And I'm just going to grab the droid texture. I'll head back, paste that in to the material viewer, drop it down here. I'll just drag and drop my texture right here and bam. He's all textured up now. Now if you're working with a model that isn't this battle droid, just disregard that completely. I just did that just for pure aesthetics there. Now, in order to make our dance troop actually pretty damn easy, what we're going to do is we're going to go into multi-view mode, this button here, and we're going to go into top view mode. I'm going to zoom out. Now, all I'm going to do is highlight our model here. Hit Control c Control v Just drag him back. And then off to the side. Once again, we want another one. Control C, Control V. Drag him off to the side. And just rinse and repeat, guys. Drag him off to the side. A little bit further back. Drag him off to the side after Control C, Control V. And put him over here. And if we go back to multi view mode. And we just zoom our perspective around. Oh. We now have a dance troop, and that took what? 30 seconds? If we push play. There we go, boys. Yeah. <laughs> now, one thing that is very important, guys, is go back into multi view mode, go back into top view mode, and make sure that neither of these guys are actually touching each other, because otherwise they're going to. Well, intersect with each other. You can see we've got a little bit of an issue here. So what we're going to do is just grab null three and null four here. Just drag them back a little bit. All right, so they're no longer touching each other. We have no issue. So as far as the setup goes, that's pretty much done as far as animation goes. Doesn't get any more complicated than that. Now, next thing I'm going to do is add a camera to the shot. And we'll just click this so we're actually looking through the camera. Now I added a bit of depth of field to my, my shot. It actually makes it look a hell of a lot better. So in order to do that, we're just going to go to Options. We're going to turn on depth of field. And in our render settings, we're going to select Physical. And turn depth of field on. Now, whether you put this sampling quality a little bit higher or lower, totally up to you. It is going to increase your render time but I'm going to put that to medium. Oh, I might even put it to high. And we'll just turn that off. Then we just have to designate the f-stop over here in the camera. So you can see I'm clicking on the camera into the physical here. And let's just put that to say 1.4. Now you can see everything's just gone all out of focus. And that's because we have to go into the object here and we have to give it a focus object or a focus distance. So I'm just gonna use object. So just click on this little arrow and then we're just gonna grab this little guy's head and it might not look like anything happened, 
but if we hit our render button, you can already see over here this guy is a lot softer than this fella here. Now guys, from there is where we sort of wander off the beaten path. See, I'm adding lights to the scene, I'm setting up ambient occlusion, I'm setting up the shadows for this particular shot. Now, this is completely individual to your particular shot. So you can see here, I'm adding a front light. I'm also adding two different backlights. And that's mainly because of the background that I've got set up in After Effects. All I'll say about this process is take your time and do plenty of preview renders and make sure it looks right to you. But once you're done, we're gonna head up to render settings and get this thing set up to render. So let's head into render settings. I'm going to output. I'm gonna make sure this is set to 1080p at 24 frames a second and we'll also set this to all frames. Next we'll hit in the save, make sure it's set to TIFF, the alpha channel is checked, there we go, and then we'll just designate a save location and render this thing out. So let's just quickly designate a save location, we'll call this, I don't know, chicken, close that out, we'll hit the render button right here and then we'll jump over to Premiere Pro. Okay guys, so here we are in Premiere Pro and I've brought in our alpha channeled render. So I'm just gonna drag that onto the timeline on the second tier here so we can drop our footage below that. So one thing I did do guys is I filmed the footage after I rendered this out. So I played this on my computer monitor, watched it, and then I aped the moves as best I could. And this pathetic display is the result of that. Me in my pajamas doing the chicken dance at five in the morning. So I found a take I liked. All I'm gonna do is just drag and drop that into the timeline. And then we'll just scale that down because I shot this in 4K, so. Now let's just play that back. So you can see that the timing's a little bit off. So now it's just a matter of going in there and saying what needs to be done. So you can see I don't start moving my hands until a few frames in. So let's just trim that, bring that over to marry up with that, and we'll just extend the end there. Now let's have a look at that. It's still not 100%, but that's the basic idea of what we have to do in Premiere Pro. So we're just grabbing a take we like, we're relatively matching up the time with the robots. So now that we've got the timing relatively right, we can send this footage to After Effects. Now I'm only gonna send the video footage because I've already imported that dance footage into After Effects. So I'll just right click, I'm gonna hit replace with After Effects and that is gonna send that straight to After Effects and we can get to work in there. Okay guys, so here we're in After Effects and I've already gone ahead and keyed out my actor. So that's done. I'm not gonna go over keying because it's been done to death in every tutorial on YouTube. So here's a look at the final shot. So you can see we've got some widescreen bars, we've got a color grade, we've got my stupid dancing, we've got the battle droids underneath that, and then finally we actually have an element 3D Star Wars hallway from the Video Copilot Star Wars download pack. So I'll just go in there and check that out. Now guys, this is a completely free download pack from Video Copod. It's a really cool model. The only reason I'm actually using Element 3D is because I could not get this thing to work as well in Cinema 4D. It just didn't look right. So I relented and I used Element 3D. I'm not gonna go over the process of getting this ready in Element 3D, because honestly guys, I don't use Element enough and I'm not confident in my ability to teach it. But what I am gonna do is I'm just gonna show you how I blended these robots into the final shot. So let's head over to the project window. We'll grab our rendered footage and I'm just gonna drop that into its own comp and position them into place. Now the first thing I did is add some motion blur. And to do that, all I did was add pixel motion blur straight here. And you can see already we've got a little bit of motion blur on our fingers. Awesome. Now all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm gonna grab our 3D camera and our element 3D layer and I'm gonna drop those in and drop them below our robots. And you can see we need to adjust those a little bit. Mm, that's good. Now, there's a couple other things we need to blend these guys into the shot. Firstly, you can see our floor is quite reflective. 
So let's ape that reflection. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm just going to go over to Red Giant's new VFX suite and I'm going to grab reflection. I'll just adjust the plane of that a little bit. And all I'm going to do is just bring the softness up and I'm going to lower the opacity. And you see the reflection's already done. Now, the other thing I did do is a little bit subtle, but once you see it, you won't be able to unsee it. And that's just add a quick shadow. Now, all I did was stretch this out down onto the floor here. And then I greatly increased the softness. So it's there. If we turn it off. So you can see it's there, but it's not really that noticeable. But it does actually make a bit of a difference because they're casting a very, very soft shadow due to the soft lights. And that's pretty much what I did to set up the robots in the shot. And then it was just a matter of grabbing my dumb ass, dropping me in on top, grabbing my magic board looks layer and my bars. Bam. And then all I did was add an adjustment layer. Went into effect, blur and sharpen, added a camera lens blur, and set that to 0 0.5. Just to soften those guys in the background because I am a little bit further ahead than them. And finally, I just came over here, went to shake, and I added Red Giant Universe's camera shake plugin with just the handheld. Turning down the master amount to about 25%. That way, we're moving around, but not too much. Now guys, obviously you don't have to do the chicken dance, but there is a very quick and easy way to give yourself a robotic dance troupe. And that, my friends, is another effect. Mm, done. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. Yo, Doug, me and the crew got something to show you. You ready, boys? Roger, roger. All right, let's do this. So guys, that's my quick and easy take on the 3D dancing robots from Little Nas X's Panini. 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 As you can see, once you've rigged up your robot and decided on a dance, it's really not that hard to bring that into Cinema 4D replicate your dancers, and then composite them into your shot. But for now guys, that's all I got for you. If you do want me to replicate any other effects from music videos, TV shows, or movies, please let me know down in the comments because I read them all. And while you're there, why not smash that like button because I really do appreciate it and it does help out. And hey, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button below and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a single film in an episode. We have over 250 episodes on the channel, so be sure and check us out. I've got two other episodes of film Linen, right over here, as well as all my social media crap there. There's the Patreon there if you want to help support the channel, or you can click that join button below and support us directly in YouTube. But until I see you again, guys, keep learning.